I'm your Minna Van Dyke in MD. I'm a surgeon by trade, but my true passion is helping people just like you obtain optimum health by adopting a whole foods, plant-based lifestyle. Today, I can't wait to share with you something super interesting, saunas. Did you know saunas are a healthy habit? They're linked to several health benefits, including the reduction of several diseases like high blood pressure, vascular diseases, and neurocognitive diseases. Other benefits include improvement of arthritis, headache, and flu symptoms. Hmm. But most impressive of all, saunas have been linked to a decrease in overall all-cause mortality, death from anything. How is this all possible? And how strong is the data on this? Are you ready to take a deep dive with me into the literature exploring the health benefits of regular sauna use? Let's go. Most of the research we have comes from Finland, the Finns, where the Finnish sauna bathing has been used for centuries in order to find pleasure, wellness, and relaxation. But Beyond its use for pleasure, scientists are finding that regular sauna use might alleviate and prevent the risk of both acute and chronic conditions. Not only are they finding these associations on a large scale, they're also able to find molecular explanations for why this is the case. So Finnish sauna bathing involves hanging out in a really small room at a high temperature, about 80 to 100 degrees Celsius. The heat is a dry heat, with relative humidity being somewhere between 10 to 20 percent. Usual sauna users stay in the sauna for anywhere from 5 to 20 minutes, and they enjoy the sauna about two to three times a week. So let's talk about the physiology of it. What happens to our body when we jump in a sauna? First, our heart rate goes up from resting rate to 120 to 150 beats per minute. Blood then is diverted away from the internal organs and goes to the skin and the extremities. The physiological changes that happen when we are in a sauna are very similar to the changes seen when we undergo a moderate or high intensity physical activity, like a really brisk walk. The stress we undergo when we use a sauna is good stress and it's called hormetic stress. So what does the research say about sauna use and high blood pressure or hypertension? There are a number of experimental studies that demonstrate an improvement in hypertension. One study in particular found statistically significant reductions in both systolic and diastolic blood pressure after just 30 minutes in the sauna. The systolic blood pressure, that upper number, dropped from a mean of 137 to 130, and the diastolic, the lower number, fell from 82 to 75. They also demonstrated that the systolic blood pressure after 30-minute recovery remained lower than pre-sauna levels. Another study followed a group of men for 24 years and found that frequent sauna use, which is four to seven sessions a week, was associated with about a 47% decreased risk of developing hypertension in the first place. Okay, so we discussed sauna use and hypertension, but what about other diseases like cardiovascular or heart disease? And what about all-cause mortality, death from any cause? For this, we have to discuss a paper published by a Finnish scientist named Dr. Lokanen. This was published in 2015 in the Journal of the American Medical Association. He followed 2,315 Finnish men, so pretty good sized study, for 20 years. And after removing all the confounding variables, he demonstrated that using sauna use frequency and duration were inversely associated with the risk of sudden cardiac death, fatal coronary artery disease, and all-cause mortality. Whoa. So, to summarize that, basically he found that the more you use the sauna and the longer you sit in there, the lower your risk of death from heart disease or from any other cause. What a cool discovery. Another study found that regular sauna use, so four to seven times per week, is associated with a 62% lower risk of stroke. Compare that to the data on baby aspirin. You know, the doctors say take a baby aspirin to prevent a stroke. One daily aspirin lowers your risk by 60%. What? You heard me right. Sauna use appears to lower your risk of stroke slightly more than taking a baby aspirin every day would. Moving on to neuroendocrine diseases like dementia. We're all scared of dementia and we know that the etiology is multifactorial, but we also know that it's associated with impaired cardiovascular function. It's associated with inflammation and oxidative stress. We know that people with higher blood pressure have a higher risk of developing these diseases in the first place. There is some recent evidence suggesting that sauna use may have a protective effect on neurocognitive disease. 
One study demonstrated that men who used a sauna four to seven times a week compared to once per week had a 66% reduced risk of dementia and a 65% reduced risk of developing Alzheimer's disease. That's huge. The caveat to that study, though, is that sauna use is a time for relaxation, and it's also a time to be social. Scientists don't really know whether it's the relaxation or the social interaction or the actual sauna effects that are so protective against Alzheimer's and dementia. Let's talk about other sauna health benefits scientists have discovered. They found improved breathing in people with asthma and chronic bronchitis. They found people had less frequent colds and they found people had a reduced risk of pneumonia with sauna use. They also found improvement in musculoskeletal issues like osteoarthritis, rheumatoid arthritis, and fibromyalgia. They found an improvement in chronic tension headaches. One study even found a reduced risk of developing psychosis. One thing that really interests me is the new research showing an association between sauna use and lowered systemic inflammation. CRP is a pro-inflammatory marker that we can measure in the blood. Regular Finnish sauna baths are associated with a lower CRP level, suggesting they have an anti-inflammatory effect. This could be huge and have ramifications on chronic inflammation and development of chronic disease. There's also evidence that sauna use boosts the immune system. With all the good things saunas have to offer, can one theoretically sauna too much? Sauna bathing is pretty safe. Most people in good health can tolerate a dry Finnish sauna. We know that saunas are pretty safe even for people that have stable cardiovascular disease and stable heart failure. There are, however, some contraindications and cautions to discuss. First one, saunas do not mix well with alcohol. In fact, one study demonstrated an increased risk of sudden death when alcohol and saunas were mixed together. Saunas could also be potentially harmful for people with unstable heart disease, unstable angina, recent heart attack, uncontrolled high blood pressure, uncontrolled heart failure, or aortic stenosis. Lastly, saunas are not the best idea in pregnancy or if you're trying to conceive. So, if you have any chronic health conditions or concerns at all, check with your doctor before embarking on your sauna journey. That concludes today's little episode. Thanks for watching. I hope you guys learned something a little more about the connection between sauna use and overall health. Please, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you want to show us some real support, subscribe. Until next time, aloha.